Well, good morning. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. Hey, I hope you're doing well today. We are here in Ohio, feeling good. And uh, the passage I have for you today is 1 John 3.17. Picks up on our theme of yesterday of being a blessing. How we look around the church to see if there are people in need. Look what it says here. Uh, the, yesterday's passage was found in James chapter 2. This one's found in 1 John. So it's a theme throughout scripture of the church taking care of the church. Brothers taking care of brothers in Christ. It says, But whoso, whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth a brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? 1 John 3.17 So what is he saying here? He's saying here that if you've been blessed and you have this world's goods. Now, we understand that that's a, um, that's a, that's a wide spectrum. What is the world's goods? I imagine it's, it's finding someone who has less than we do. Um, I don't think any of us would class ourselves as being rich. And uh, none of us would classify ourselves as being uh, well-to-do. Most of us have bills. Most of us kind of sweat it out. Uh, paycheck to paycheck. Most of us um, have desires for things that we want a vacation or we want our cars in need and uh, of repair or, or we need to uh, invest in a new vehicle or you know we have a roof that we need to put on our house. We all are in that s same situation I, I imagine. But that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about our needs. He's saying those who have this world's goods. You have uh, you can you have the opportunity to be a blessing to someone else. He says, But whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother. Now, who's he talking about? A brother? A brother in Christ. Someone who was saved. Someone who was in the church. Someone you know. You know their character. You know that they struggle. You know that uh, they're faithful, and all of a sudden they have a need. Their car breaks down. Uh, they have a bill. They're their, their lights are getting ready to be turned off. They're, they're getting ready to be kicked out of their home. But, you know, they, they've had uh, maybe, uh, you know, an unfortunate events occur in their life. You know, they got sick. A spouse got sick. A child got sick. They lost their job and so many things. And, and yet you have the means of being a blessing and you choose not to. He says, but whoso hath this world's goods and seeth his brother have need, and shut up his bowels of compassion from him. That bowels of compassion. He's saying that you see the need and it, does, it doesn't move you. It doesn't move you to reach in your hand, in your pocket, or to get out a, a checkbook or uh, to try to assist them, maybe getting the services that they may need. You know, hey, you need a car repair where John over here, uh, John owns a, uh, a car rep, uh, repair place and uh, you know let's let's go over there and talk to him maybe he can do the work and you just having to having to come up with the cost of the parts and allow John now to be a, enter into that blessing you become a blessing John's become a blessing to this guy who has need uh, who, who sh and shutteth up his bowels of compassion how dwelleth the love of God in him in other words how do we express ourselves, express that we are truly uh, loved of God, God loves us, and and um, and we are saved if we can shut our bowels of compassion to those who have a legitimate need? The fact is, we can't. Uh, you know, our, what we say always has to be matched by our actions. Always has to be matched by our actions. And um, I remember years ago, uh, we had a, a guy in our church named Bud, and, and Bud is a, a fine, uh, owns a body shop, and he's a fine Christian, godly man, Sunday school teacher for many years, adult Sunday school teacher, and uh, there was, we had another gentleman, an older gentleman, and, uh, and we loved him, you know, and he had a lot of needs, and um, uh, one of them was a vehicle, and Bud saw the need, and um, and Bud found a vehicle for him, for that older gentleman, and, and bought it for him, bought it for him. And, um, and, and you'd say, wow, that's, that's tremendous. But you know what? Because Bud bought the vehicle for 
uh, before him, uh, Bud felt the responsibility to make sure that that vehicle was maintained. So Bud not only sp spent his own money to purchase the vehicle for this older guy who was faithful to the church, who loved the Lord, um, who could not afford to do it himself, but Bud made sure that the, when it needed brakes, it, it got brakes. When it needed this, it got that. Because this guy was on a limited income and he couldn't do it himself. That's the love of God. That's the love of God. When we take from our own self, maybe we do without in order to help somebody else. When we step outside our, uh, of our own sphere of, of need and we begin to look at uh, the needs of our brothers in Christ. As I said yesterday, it, we're not talking necessarily about uh, the unsaved. We're talking about the saved. We're talking about helping um, those who are, who are living for Christ but have suffered um, a, a setback in some form or fashion. Don't you think God uses God's people, his children, as his arms and his eyes and his ears and as uh, when we pray and we uh, not that he needs us to be his eyes or arms or ears but he uses us he allows us to step into the eternal when we step out ourselves of ourselves and we give to other people um, then we become the blessing and then we show the love of christ not only to that person but also the entire church and i think it becomes contagious and it also becomes uh, a witness to the world. But don't you know that older gentleman would tell people um, what Bud had done for him, what his church had done for him? See, that's that's a testimony there, isn't it? And so he's saying here, if you want to show the love of Christ, it's more than just saying it. We have to do it. We have to uh, let people experience the love of Christ through us. Amen? Amen. Remember that God loves you, and I love you as well. And I'll talk to you soon.